Well, hello there, this is Tamil, and I will go over some 3D work in Clip Studio Paint. If you don't have anything open, you go into Window, Material, Background. In here, you're going to find the 3D section. These are the materials that are coming with Clip Studio Paint. You can download more of them on the website, and uh, they are going to be in my article that I'm going to link below. Here are the presets that Clip Studio Paint was kind enough to make. And let's just grab the classroom and drop it into the scene. And that's it, it works. It's that easy for the most part. You don't have to do anything else. Now you can see that there are navigation and there are some options here and there's some options here. In short, if you wanna edit the 3D, you actually have to go into operation and object. So if you're using the brush, it will not be able to affect the 3D at all. Uh, the first button is for panning around with the camera. A shortcut would be the left uh, button. You can simply do this. And sometimes they actually, if you click on it, it's going to lock into that uh, function. So if something feels wrong, you can always click on it and it will do that last one, if that makes sense sense the second one is actually moving around um, the scene without turning the camera and this one is actually for zooming in so the zoom in is right click and up and down so left click to pan middle click to move around and right click to zoom in or zoom out super easy the other five are actually for an object and the school is technically one big object that I just imported. It's going to be affecting the classroom, but I don't want that because I want to add more things to it. So let's try and add a thing to the scene. A very important thing is that if you don't have this layer selected with the 3D, it's going to import it at a wrong uh, new perspective. So let's say I want to add like um, a bicycle. It's going to make a new uh, 3D scene and it's not going to be applying the same exact thing. So if you move it and try to like place it on a table, it's not going to let you because it's a different, uh, it thinks it's a different layer. So when you import, keep in mind that you have to have this one selected. So I picked a bike and uh, as you can see now I have the same exact options, but I it's in the scene. So the first button is for moving it around freely. Uh, it's not very versatile. It's not going to work out if you're trying to do precise work. But for quick stuff, it's, it's good. If you click on the bicycle itself, uh, you can see that these are the more precise uh, ones. So these are for moving uh, around. These are for rotating and the same things are over here. You can actually, I'm really, really grateful for Clip Studio Paint making this super easy because I actually used a lot of other different 3D software and it's not very intuitive like this one. Um, the cool feature that is actually missing in other softwares that, well, you can do them, but it's a little bit more complicated. Um, the last one, the very last button, it's amazing. So in short, it basically lets you move around the scene but it's going to land the object on top of the other object automatically for you. When you import a model that you're not making, so if you say you downloaded it from a different website, let's say you opened CG Trader. There are actually four websites that you can check out. Um, there's Sketchfab, there's CG Trader, there's TuberSquid, and there's Free3D. These websites let you download different models for use. If you don't know anything about 3D, there are different formats of 3D and Clip Studio Paint will not support all of them because they're dependent on the program that you're using. The most common ones that you should be looking for is usually OBJ, which is for object. I think, I'm not sure. <laughs> I think it's, there's a different abbreviation, but I, that's how I try to remember it. It's object. And the other one is Autodesk, Autodesk FPX. These two are actually supported in most of the software that you can find these days. And I would say OBJ is better in terms of, because it has less information, it, 
it's less likely to give you problems when you import it. And there are some uh, things that FBX lets you do it. Uh, for example, I think it lets you save animation, but it's like more advanced stuff and usually you don't need that for, especially if you're using it for Clip Studio Paint. So let's say I have this one, right? And I'm not going to download it, but you can uh, register and you can download it and you can import it into Clip Studio Paint and you can register it as a new material uh, and all that. But sometimes there's a thing where if you have the model, they usually either measure it in centimeters or millimeters when they first start the program. I believe Maya starts in uh, centimeters first and then you have to scale it up to meters later. And so because of that, there are problems when you import the object into different programs because it's set to one scale, but you're actually modeling in the other scale. In short, if you bring in that uh, TV, it has a huge chance that it's going to be either super, super tiny or gigantic. And uh, that's what you have to watch out for when you download someone else's model. You can also make your own model using Blender. It's a really cool free software. It's completely free. You can uh, use it and it's very, um, there's a lot of tutorials on it on YouTube and you can uh, find around uh, most of the things that you need to in order to make like a really, really good model. And you can also use the Clip Studio Paint uh, built-in uh, 3D modeling kit. I haven't used it yet. I'm still experimenting with it but it's really up to you. There are a lot of options and you can also download the materials from Clip Studio Paint and you don't have to model any, everything. So it depends on your situation, depends on what you're looking for. So in order to fix the scaling problem, you wanna select the object and the object scale, you wanna uh, change the size of the object. And in here, I decided to make the bicycle 20. So in order to make it super tiny and then I can maybe use it as a miniature for a table, right? Maybe one of the kids has the miniature bike table. And then this last button is going to let you move around and land it right on the table. And I think that's really, really cool that um, that button exists and you don't have to worry about it too much. And now you can just move around the the bicycle and now it's going to be kind of like used inside the, the classroom and actually you can also scale it with this button and it really it's really up to you which do you prefer in order to cycle through models right here there's like a little arrow thing you can either click on the object or cycle through it um, it gets a little bit confusing and in here you can see all of the the models and the light that you have and everything that you need in here if you click on the classroom it's going to give you presets for camera angles which is also great so if you if say i want this angle or classic angle or teacher's desk whatever it might be you can actually go and it gives you um all these presets the clip studio paint uh was really cool enough to make these for you. I clicked on uh, the layout and here you can find that there's um, different rendering. There's wooden, there's color groups, there's luxury, and every single model has different ones that uh, if the author put it there, and I think it's pretty cool that they do. And uh, you can also change the chairs or move the windows or remove the ceiling, for example, right? And the last one is actually pretty dope. Um, it lets you move things around and you see, you, you can move the door around if you want to open it or close it. And you can like maybe even make like little animations with it if you want to. And so all these things are uh, baked into the scene. And because you can't move too many things around, that's why it, it works that way. And so there's also display settings. There's also the normal. There's like a little bit high quality, but I don't feel the difference. So I usually just keep it on fast. And it also cuts off the edges. You can also add an outline to your render. 
which um, I'll get into a little bit later. There's also a very important setting in the camera. Um, in the angle, there's a perspective. And in short, this is going to be making your shot like more like fish eye, fish eye lens or it's going to make it very flat looking. So right now I have it at five and more of it will actually change the perspective. So if I push it just a little more, you can see that it's changing the way the room looks because it's actually making it more uh, wider lens. But if you make it super, super uh, tiny, like one, and let's get into presets, you can see it's very, very like simply um, drawn. There's not a lot of depth to it. Um, and so it tries to mimic. Yeah, there you go. That's very flat looking. It's very like. Uh, long lens if you know anything about cameras uh, You don't have to worry about all these things usually you just uh, have to keep in mind that it's around five That is like normal view um, There's also a very cool thing in the in here. So if you click the little wrench, there's a lot of options in here uh, The better one is actually render settings. So there's like there's light there's um, you can change the way it ch changes the lighting, you know the if it, the shadows are more like realistic or it's like more cartoony there's also adding the outline there's also clipping which is a very uh, important thing if you have a very big object uh, the camera will only see a certain amount of distance and if it's a very very big object like it happened to me last time i had a city that i imported and it would clip off some of the city this is where you would change it uh, in order to make the scene, um, you can see the entire thing immediately. So let's say I like the way it looks and I, you know, I can change the lighting by hovering over different places. Um, I like the way it looks. Um, if you have the pro version of Clip Studio Paint, unfortunately, you don't have access to LT conversion different. Um, and it's, it's fancy words for converting the 3D model into outline. In here, if you have the the X version, the more advanced one, you go into the layer and you can see over here, there is that tab that says convert uh, LC advanced stuff. And that lets you convert 3D model into a 2D drawing. And there is a work around it. It's not perfect. But for people who only have the pro version, this is what I recommend. So let's say I am done with my render, right? Let's me, let me duplicate it just in case. So I made the thing and I right click on it and I can rasterize it. And it should just give me the image now without any, so I can see that. Yeah, that's just, you know, uh, the 2D image. Uh, nothing is rendering, everything is the same. And in here, in the filter menu, you actually can go into effects and click artistic and so in the artistic I changed it to lines only and now it's actually going to give you these options I played around with it a little bit and I think this is like the most optimal for me and what I'm looking for and I uh, usually just go and leave these settings on and now I have only the line art so I don't have anything else and now can now paint under it and uh, do anything that I want with it. So there are some edges that are weirdly drawn like this one. And these things you can um, try to fix in post. So maybe I can make a layer, I mean, I can make a mask and I can just delete some of it and uh, go over it and just not deal with these jagged edges. But again, if you have the X version it has like a better rendering engine, which lets you not worry about that. I think this is a really, really good start for like a painting. You can do a base color and then you can half tone some of it. And I think it really, really works for people who do only uh, manga that is in black and white or comics. Like this style is like super amazing and you can just like add characters to it um, in here. And there are a lot of characters that you can use and there's poses. Um, I'm not going to go over characters today, but this is basically like the gist of it. So this is usually what you could do. You can import a model, 
you can um, do the the line art artwork and then you can just paint on the bottom of it so let's say i want to import right uh, i just want to double check if it works and i have a lot of 3d models that i've made or downloaded uh, i want just uh, like a simple one and I just drag and drop it and so on the bottom you can see there is a shadow right and that's because there's a floor that is going to be right there and so the little dark thing you see if I move it around there's a very dark uh, little square at the bottom that's the floor and uh, you can see that the model that I already imported is actually way too big for the floor and I would actually I have this scale at 40 already so I would go into like maybe even 10 and I try to move it around and after that this is the floor so that was that tiny thing that's the floor that's it should be about the size of that and uh, I can keep descaling it in order to make it smaller but it depends if you have like other objects or not and uh, in order for it to go um, down on the ground you can actually here see place model on the ground level and it's going to be automatically putting it right there or you can use the the small button right here and you can just slide around the screen and it's going to uh, put it in perspective exactly the way you want it to there's also center object in case you lost your object because that happened to me a couple of times while I was recording this um, and you can see actually here you can specify the angle just in case. So let's say I want to do this and you can, let's duplicate it and let's rasterize it. And I can just do the same thing that I did last time and go into the effects and artistic and render it. And now I have like a little boat and I can uh, build on top of this. So maybe I can bring in some photos of a storm under it and put it behind and just uh, add sky that is black and I can just go on top like that's it this, like the possibilities are pretty much endless it's really really useful and easy and I have used 3d software in other programs and this is by far the most intuitive easy one sure it has some limitations in it but I think for people who just want to get uh, basic things done this is really cool because in other software, um, it's either way too advanced or it's pretty much useless. And there are very, very little things you can do with it. And this is like a really nice middle ground for me, at least. And I'm still figuring out the 3D uh, modeling part, but this is basically it. I will link down the article and you can read uh, a little bit more if you missed anything in here or you want to get some more information because I also uh, had some links for a couple of other artists who actually did uh, cool 3d models and they put it up on clip studio paint and they're free and you can just download it and you can import it here as well with no problem and you can uh, also check out like other things that i talked about and uh let me know in the comments if you have any questions uh sorry i don't have like any advanced painting for this one specifically because this is more like a uh, technical tutorial because I don't want to waste your time going over you know this is how you paint the sphere and this uh, 3d model thing and this is how you put it together uh, you know what I mean um, I don't go over that because I, I already did these things before and it's kind of like cluttering the video and so here you can uh, also uh, figure out the perspective by the way don't forget that you have perspective tools so if you go into the layer and uh, create perspective ruler. You can actually find perspective pretty easy and uh, just align it to the one that it is on the 3D model. And then you can just draw on top of that as well. So it's it's really, um, the tools are like pretty much infinite and endless in the software. And uh, you can go over that and let me know if you have any questions. I hope you learned something and happy painting.